everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to be starting on another of my spooky fall projects. And actually I'm changing around the order that I mentioned in the last video where I made this jumper dress, which by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I will go ahead and link that one up above and down below in the description. But as I mentioned in that one, I have a lot more fall projects. And originally I was going to do my next jumper, which is a sort of a check plaid gingham-ish Halloween-ish thing. I was going to do that next, but it has come to my attention that I have lots and lots of pieces of the spooky strawberry dress already cut out. And they're glittery and they're fine and they're tool and they're net and they're all sorts of like fragile things that I don't particularly want to leave out in my sewing room for a very long period of time, especially considering that those are the exact types of fabrics that Dora gets really curious about, and I don't want her to do anything to them, like for example this morning when I was in the other room and she just knocked over my dress form on the floor with all of those layers of skirts that were pinned onto it. Thanks Dora. So I've decided to move up that project and I'm gonna do it now! except there's a little bit of a change of plans to that project. So originally I was going to do this ensemble as a dress. One piece, top and bottom, all connected, etc. But I put these skirt pieces onto the dress form with my 1890s summer bodice still on it and realized that they look really, really good together. And everyone else on Instagram and everything told me, oh my god, they look amazing together. And now I think I want to have the option to wear them together. Not that I'm going to do that very frequently, but I want that option. Which means that I think that the spooky strawberry dress is going to become spooky strawberry separates. And I know that really there's no strawberries involved in the making of this anyway, so let's maybe just call this the spooky spiderweb separates if I can say that without having my sibilant S go crazy in this. And I am very excited for this because that means that I can wear this skirt all the freaking time and not have to worry about, you know, a sweater fitting over puffed sleeves or do I want this bodice part of the dress, etc. So I can mix and match them. I could wear the top part of it with a different skirt. Oh my gosh, possibilities are endless. So this week we are going to make the skirt portion since it's already cut out. I did all of my floor trolling last week. The only thing that I still need to cut out for that are pockets and the waistband and that's it. So it's just going to be assembly. So since this is a super multi-layered skirt, one of the things that I do want to show you this week is how pockets and a zipper are going to work in this project. I know that I've done this before. I think I did this with the strawberry dress last year, which if you haven't seen my strawberry dress video, I will also link that up above and down below in the description. But I went over how to put in pockets on a skirt when you have multiple layers, some of those being net or other things like that. So this time we're going to look at that on a skirt instead of on a dress. It's very similar, but a lot of people might not be working with dresses or you know what you might just need a refresher so that's one of the things that we're really going to cover with this because otherwise frankly it's a circle skirt it shouldn't be that hard it just happens to have four layers to it and two of them consist basically wholly of shedding glitter so this is going to be fun but i'm very very excited for it i'm so excited to start wearing it and maybe even to wear it with that 1890s bodice so as I mentioned, all of those first pieces are already cut out. I'm going to go cut out the other pieces and then we will get into assembly. Before we dive into making the spooky skirt, I want to talk about the sponsor for today's video, which is Skillshare. I've talked about Skillshare a few times on this channel, but if you haven't yet heard of them, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. On Skillshare, you can find thousands of inspiring classes on topics ranging from basic sewing skills to self-care, photography, to productivity, and so many more. Lately, I've been struggling a bit with motivation and procrastination, so I decided to take a class called 
learn to motivate yourself, master self-discipline and get things done, which is taught by Katrinelle Gerbevan. In this quick 32 minute class, she provides some great tips on how to find motivation or at least how to break through those unmotivated feelings and get things accomplished little by little. By the end of the class, I was already feeling more motivated. One of the many nice things about Skillshare is that the classes are really meant for your schedule. Like the class I just took, many of the classes are under an hour, and you can pause, rewind, or rewatch classes as often as you like. And the great news is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your creativity and unlock your limitless creative potential. And now, on to the spooky skirt! All right, I've cut all of my pieces out for the skirt now, which means that I cut the pockets out. Actually, I cut the pockets out twice because I cut them out of black cotton at first and then held them up to the layers together and realized, no, they need to be purple cotton. So then I cut them out again out of the purple cotton that is the base skirt. And I also cut out the waistband. Now, I knew for the waistband that it was going to have to be multiple layers because the bodice is going to get most likely tucked in to the waistband eventually or anything's going to get tucked into the waistband and I didn't want it to be just like a solid color or whatever. I wanted it to match the rest of the skirt. So that means that it has to be at least three out of the four layers of the skirt. The skirt has the cotton, two layers of glitter tulle, and one layer of cobweb. But I figured one layer of glitter tulle is probably okay for the waistband. It doesn't change the visual that much, especially on a flat surface. So that's the waistband. I love how it looks. I think it is so pretty. And it, all I did was I cut it out of the cotton first. It is 45 inches long total, so it'll give me a lap, and four inches wide, which I have a four inch wide ruler, so it makes it really easy. And I cut it out of the cotton, then I laid the glitter tool over the cotton because it's see-through, cut around that. I ironed them together first so they'd kind of like stay together a little and cut around that and then did the same thing with the spider web. And that time as I was cutting the spider web, I pinned it all in place so that I could put it through the serger. So now all of the edges are serged and everything is ready to go. I've also serged my pockets and the waistband of the cotton layer of the skirt. The nice thing is that the tool and mesh layers don't have to be searched. They're not going to fray. They're not going to go anywhere. So those don't have to be finished, which is at least a little bit of, of a nice thing there. So now we can go ahead and do the assembly. So the key is when you are working with a skirt like this, you can see it just draped over the form. <laughs> when you're working with a skirt like this, where it does have multiple layers and the top layers are all sheer, is that you need the pocket to attach to all of those layers, but then underneath the pocket, you need each layer to attach only to itself. So to start off with, we're going to take our layers of, our four layers of the skirt, and we are going to pin them together at the sides on both sides, front and back. We're going to pin them together at the sides for about the top 10 inches. You can also baste this together whatever your preference. I'm just going to work pinned because I don't really feel like I get any advantage from basting. And once I've pinned all of those together, I'm going to pin the pockets to the sides. So let me show you a little closer about what that looks like. I had nearly forgotten that there is one important step that we have to do before we actually go into pocket and zipper land. And that is because this skirt is consisting of multiple layers that have different waist measurements in the layers. So what I mean by that is that the purple underlayer has a waist of this big, whereas the outer layer's waist is that big. So what that means is that we actually have to gather the layers separately. Not all of them, because for this skirt, the two purple tool layers and the spiderweb layer, they all have the same waist measurement and it's just different in the cotton. So that means that what I've done here is I have pinned together the edges of these three layers. I've pinned them for the pockets, even though we will be adding in the cotton layer for that portion. And I've also pinned the top around the waistline. And I'm going to do that for both of these layers. And then sort of almost like a basting stitch, I'm actually going to run two gathering stitches across the top of this. So it'll be two stitches close to the edge, just like any other gathering stitch that you are to do. But that happens both on this and separately 
on this and also of course the back since this is just the front. So once I've gathered it up, then I can, I don't have to worry about pulling up the gathers or anything, but I can put these together at the sides so that I can go ahead and start putting in pockets and zippers. So I'm gonna go gather this up and I'll be back in a moment. So what I have here now is the front right here, which is prepped with a pocket on each side. I have not yet sewn it, but they are pinned. And you can see all of the layers right in there that are ready to go together. Sorry for my awful nail polish. And I've also pinned the center fronts because I did mark them, but I pinned them together and pulled up this so that it would be approximately the same size. So that way it's not hanging loose. And then again, this pocket over here. Now here I have the back. The back only has the pocket part pinned to the left hand side. It doesn't have a pocket pinned to this side. This is just pinned to itself. That is the pocket bag. However, this pocket bag is actually going to get attached to the front pockets, which in this case is actually this side since this is flipped around, but this is the right side of the skirt and the spare pocket bag will attach to this pocket. I'll show you more how that goes once I have sewn all of these in place. So now that the pocket is sewn on, I have gone and I've pressed this seam. You want to make sure that the seam allowance is pressed out this way. So from the back, it looks like that, and we're pressing it flat like this. I tend to go ahead and just press it from this side so that you can make sure this is nice and clean. By the way, I forgot to mention before, but this is a 3 8 inch seam allowance because later we are going to be doing a larger seam allowance, so you wanna make sure this one's nice and small. So now that we have that pressed out, we can take our last pocket piece here and we can flip it over like so and pin all around the edges and sew all around the edges and what we're doing here is we are creating a pocket bag that is only attached to the front of the skirt and then we will wind up attaching the zipper to the bag itself right along this edge here and not to the skirt on this side. One other thing, when you are sewing around this pocket bag, you are going to sew from, I made a little mark right here, but it is where this seam is. And so you're going to sew from there all the way around up the top. And then again, I made another little mark right here. So I'm not gonna go past that because otherwise we won't have this to play with. Now that that's sewn on, what I've done is I have cut a tiny little notch right here in the edge of the skirt fabric. This is the seam allowance down the skirt right here. And I've cut this little notch and that is so the pocket, this whole bag can now be pressed inwards like this. And we can basically just treat this edge the same as this edge here. So it still does need to be pressed, but see how these come together right there? So now we can just treat all of that as one. And that is where the zipper is going to get sewn to. The other side here is just going to be assembled like any normal skirt pocket. So where I have pressed both of these out just like that first one. So we have a nice clean line right there. And then this is getting laid on top of here and pinned in place and then sewn all around the outside here. And then this is where it gets a little bit different because we have all of these skirt layers. There's four skirt layers here. And we want all of these skirt layers to be sewn to each other, but not to each other, if that makes sense. As in the cotton will get sewn to the cotton. The one layer of tulle will get sewn to the other layer of tulle, the second layer of tulle to the second, and the spider web to the spider web. So we have to treat all of those separately. So we're going to be doing, playing a little with this area over here to make sure that everything lays nice. But for right now, we're just doing the pocket. I decided I would go ahead and sew together the innermost layer of the skirt in one fell swoop along with the pocket. So what that means is that right here, this is where all of everything just comes together. And what you really need to do is you need to take all of the tool layers inside, just pull them away from that spot. So that right here, it's just nice and thin, one layer, just the cotton. Whereas right here, you have all of those layers in the tool. So with those out of the way, I can now come around the pocket, come up here, we're going to be doing about like a half inch to five eighths inch seam allowance right here and then we're going to taper it out to just half inch but right here we need a little bit more just to cover up the seam of the pocket and it's going to go over the tool and then off the tool right here so I'm going to stitch that all up. 
So this is what that looks like now inside or outside kind of. So this is the outside of the purple base layer. Then we have the tool and the spider web here. So now we are going to start assembling these layers here. And I'm going to start with the spider web A because I have black thread on the machine and B because it is the top layer and therefore should hopefully look the cleanest. So I'm going to start with a very, very tiny seam allowance right here, tapering out to probably still a relatively small one, probably no larger than three eighths inches down the entire skirt. I might even keep it to a quarter inch. Luckily, this doesn't fray or anything like that. So small seam allowances are great. They'll also leave less of an impact if they're small. So I'm going to do this, this is right sides together by the way, do this seam here. Then I'm going to do the same thing pulling out this layer of tool and putting it with this layer of tool and then the same thing over here. And then all of those will fall nicely with all of the seams facing down towards the inside of the skirt and that side will be done. Now that the first side is done, it's time to start this other side and start putting the zipper in. So I have ironed this zipper open, this is an invisible zipper, and I've ironed it open so that it's all nice and flat, which is how you prep an invisible zipper. And I have pinned it to the side that does not have a pocket. So this is the back, just because the side's easier. I also clipped the top so there's about a half inch total past where the zipper head pulls up to, because that way that half inch will go into the waistband seam allowance and I won't have extra gap there. So I don't know why they always make that so big, but yeah, I just wanted that at a half inch. So now I am going to sew this side on with an invisible zipper foot, and then I'll show you the tricky part, which is putting the other side on that bit with the pocket. And then on this side, the zipper gets pinned to the pocket. So this is that pocket flap that was sticking over, and that is attached just to the pocket and goes down to the pretty much hits pretty much at the bottom opening area of the pocket, but I'll show you what we do with that too, because the zipper is actually just a little bit shorter than the pocket, but also with a pocket, you don't want it open all the way down because otherwise your stuff's gonna fall out. So I'll show you how that works in a little bit, but I am going to go ahead and stitch this in place onto the pocket. And then once you finish the zipper part, you continue sewing down the seams, just like we did on the other side. The biggest thing here is that you wanna make sure that where it all comes together, bottom of the zipper and the side, that that all runs together as one seam. You can see that it's all one seam right up there, and that just means that the zipper is gonna blend in better. So I have now already done this one. I still need to press this seam, and I also went ahead and I did the spider web seam. I obviously still need to do the tool seams, but I did the spider web seam and it works the same way. You just get right in there with a little narrow seam allowance up at the top and then I opened it up to about three eighths seam allowance, three eighths inch seam allowance for the rest of the way down. Now I'm going to do the same with the tool and then all this will need is a waistband and a hem on the purple cotton. I've just pressed all of my seams on these four layers, and there's one other thing that I've left to do before I can move on to the waistband, which is my zipper only opens to here, but the pocket opens to here. And as I mentioned, you don't want your pocket to be all the way open because then things will fall out. So this space right here, normally on a regular skirt, I would top stitch that because that would just kind of just blend in with the skirt. But with this being so many layers and so many colors, I am actually going to hand stitch this. So I'm just going to stitch this shut right to there. This is the bottom of it right here. I'm just going to stitch that shut that inch and do that by hand and move on to the waistband. I've been assembling this waistband in what I would say is the usual way, but I figured I would give a quick explanation anyway. I think I mentioned earlier this waistband is four inches wide across by 45 inches long, and I went and I marked on the waistband where the end of my waist measurement is plus half inch. So I marked 41 and a half inches, uh, just because I wanted it loose and comfortable since I don't know what I'm doing with the bodice yet, and then I divided that by quarters. So making sure that you don't include that half inch seam allowance in there, divide it by quarters and make little marks. Then match those marks to the side. Well, I mean, that's the end, but the end, the center, the side and the center, and then this end right over here. And the excess goes off in this tab. This is all right sides together, of course. Then you sew it all on, right? Well, you, you know, pull up the gathers to match pin it, sew it all on. And then these edges, you just turn that and make a little corner, turn that right side out. And over here, you're making a little tab corner and then turn that right side out. You will clip this corner too. 
when you turn it right side out before. And then I folded down the inside so it looks like that. And now it's pinned in place and it is ready to get stitched in the ditch, meaning I'm going to go from the top side and stitch right along this little seam line, fold line, and stitch that all on. And then the waistband will be done other than the hook and eye. I'll be doing the hook and eye and the hem tomorrow. So she is hanging out on the dress form for the night, looking nearly finished because she just needs the hem and the hooks and eyes. And I love the way it looks with the bodice. I think I might do that for pictures, at least these first round of pictures. But I also want to point out the absolute disaster that is the glitter floor. This is really pretty much just from today. Oh my gosh, you can see it just like stacked up. I mean, I know my sewing room is a mess also, but like, oh my god, that's a lot of glitter. Jeez. And uh, I'm just worried that like Lion's gonna rub his face in it because that's what he does. And the table is not looking too much better. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot of cleanup. Frankly, it's gonna be a lot of cleanup every time I wear it but it's about three in the morning, so that's it for me tonight. I will be back tomorrow to finish this skirt. let's do a little wrap up even though this is only a portion of this project of course I am thrilled with how it came out I want to wear this all the time I mean it is not a very practical skirt like talk about a Hansel and Gretel moment people will be able to track me everywhere because I'm just leaving glitter behind <laughs> and it's also made out of mesh and tool and delicate fabrics but it is so swooshy and so fun and so spooky and I love it. And naturally I picked a time of day and a day when there was no sun in the sky so I went outside to do that reveal footage and it didn't glitter at all. Whoops. So hopefully you can tell how much it is glittery. I mean, I know you could see by my floor yesterday. The hem, by the way, is just a very narrow hem. I just turned it, it's probably about three eighths inch, three eighths inch turn, uh, so three quarters inch total that I took off of the hem. Again, just on a cotton layer. The other layers don't need to be hemmed or anything because they won't fray. So yay for mesh and tool not fraying. So yeah, this is part one of this project. The next part will be coming later in spooky season. And actually there are going to be ideally three parts of this project. So I do plan to make the bodice portion to go with this spooky skirt. I also plan to make a hat to coordinate and show you the final look. I'll probably also show you what it looks like with that 1890s bodice because I do want those options. I just didn't feel like ruining the surprise for you and putting it on today. 
So this is the skirt part. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please make sure to click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, like the other parts of this project, do make sure to click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela, as well as a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. And don't forget that link down in the description below will give you a free trial of premium membership for Skillshare. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!